Well, can you believe it? The 100th Ranger Dick episode. I tell you what, this month we got a little scenario for you. I'm joined by a law enforcement professional, Corporal David Fisher. So good to be with you, Corporal. Good to be here. I appreciate your time and appreciate all your service, what you're doing in Georgia. I've called Corporal Fisher out here today for this scenario of Corporal, I believe, for the purposes of our segment, that someone is trespassing on my land, potentially, and hunting illegally. I believe they're coming in off this road, and I brought you out here to help me do a little detective work. We're walking along. What can you do to help me? I'm not a detective. I'm not a law enforcement professional. What are you looking for to help me determine, is somebody out here illegally? I have not given permission to. Well, I mean, I'm glad you said that. Uh, complaints are obviously our top priority. And we go, we, we, a lot of what we do is based on what the landowners give us. So what I'm gonna do is talk to you and say, what makes you believe that somebody's on your property? Uh, you know, oftentimes we'll go to that area, he'll tell me, that, that landowner will tell me about the property, you know, what's there, you know, what's in season at the time, that's gonna tell me a lot about what's, you know, what could be going on. And I'm gonna start looking at tracks and things like that. And um, any signs that might give me a, a hint or some sort of, you know, direction on where to start my investigation. You're looking for boot tracks. I mean, we've got one on the ground right here. And, and for the purposes of today, as we look out through this group of grass right here, I've walked through there a little bit earlier to show everybody. But you're going to look at a bunch of grass and see if it's kind of matted down a little bit. Is that what you're? Well, and, and you say that, but people inadvertently leave sign. They don't mm. realize they do, but they do. And we see this, and a lot of folks don't realize they're doing it. But we pick up on this as game wardens, and that, that's where we start. And the folks at home can see that. So as you're walking back through, how do you know this is potentially a person and not a deer? Just a goofy question. Well, it could be a deer, but it, it may not be a deer. So we will continue to follow the trail until we find more signs that, that, that is pointing, pointing that it could be a person and not a deer. And right. at the end of the, the trail, there's if it's going to be a hunting or fishing or you know some sort of uh, complaint that's related to us, we're going to find something that's going to indicate why they're there and what they're doing. And it could be bait. It could be trash there. It could be something that would say, all right, and then what? You coming back, I'm guessing? We will, most definitely. <laughs> okay. I mean, we work, our hours are, are very unique and, and we could come in the middle of the night, we could come first thing in the morning, in the afternoon, midday, it, it really depends. Um, but we're, our schedule is all over the place and we could very well enter the property and check on the complaint anytime, day or night. Corporal, what I wanna do now is I wanna give a scenario to the folks at home. If someone was to run into a game warden, what is that game warden gonna to do to assess the situation? And let's go there next. So what you're seeing here is a classic example of what we may encounter this, this time of year uh, leading into turkey season. Um, I've investigated the complaint, I've followed the trail, uh, I've come to an area where obviously, you know, somebody has been, I've located a baited area, you know, it's, it's leading into turkey season. This, this makes me believe that somebody is in here hunting, they've put out a bait site and they're going to be in here illegally hunting turkeys over bait. And Corporal, just to make sure, I can feed the critters, I can feed the turkeys and the deer, I just can't hunt over this. That's right. Okay, now let's just say, purposes of TV here, I'm the guy that's been out here doing this illegally. You have caught me. Walk me through some of the things that are going on ahead of time and now that you found me out here. Well, it all started with the landowner, the initial contact with the landowner. I'm gonna make sure that per our policy, our landowner affidavit is signed and the landowner has, has you know, gone through that process. Um, so once I contact that information, more than likely I already know that that individual is not supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. But I'll start looking at body language. I'll start, you know, not necessarily putting a lot of thought into nervousness because a mm -hmm. lot of folks get nervous when they're around law enforcement. But if they are and they have their hands in their pockets, I'll say, hey, would you mind pulling your hands out of your pocket okay. so I can see them? Um, you know, and it, we'll kind of go from there. I'll ask to, you know, do a compliance check on his uh, hunting license. Oftentimes we may encounter uh, other violations once we start actually contacting that hunter, in addition to hunting, of, uh, hunting without permission and hunting over bait. And so what's so cool about what we're learning about here is the detective work, but I think essentially your ability to form a relationship with me, you're not out here saying, Nick, get up against this tree, you're, you're doing something illegal. We're having a conversation and I think that's so important for the folks at home to see and particularly where we go next with the idea of if you're interested in doing this as a job, what kinds of things are you doing? So much people work, I'm thinking, in your line of work. Yes, sir, most definitely. That's the cool part. Well, let's go take a look and let's talk about if you're interested in getting into this kind of a career, let's talk about how you can do it next. Well, we cracked the case with Corporal Fisher, and now I want to introduce you to Game Warden McDade. Game Warden McDade, so good to meet you nice today. Nice to meet you. Thanks for being with us. You know, what's so special about this is to learn about some of the things that Game Warden McDade is doing, and that includes recruitment. So if you're sitting at home 
thinking to yourself, man, maybe my son or daughter, grandson, granddaughter, myself, I'm interested in learning more about this type of job. It sounds so cool. Game Warden McDade, what's some pieces of advice you'd have for us if we're thinking about that? So, 21 years of age, have to be a U.S. citizen, right. um, have to have an associate's degree, which is a two-year degree, or um, four years active duty military service with an honorable discharge. Um, that'll satisfy that education piece. So those are the two things, and I just want to reiterate associate's degree, two-year degree, because there's a common misconception you have to have a bachelor's. Now, criminal justice is preferred, but it can be in anything. You know, you could have a psychology degree, a business degree. Um, so you can go to any technical college. Um, it's got to be accredited university, right? So any technical college, junior college, and get and get that degree so but that that's important yeah. and, and I think that's so good for folks to know if you're concerned about that bachelor's degree the associates what you're looking for and so for right. you what got you into this so I actually um, got into it because of my brother my brother um, had worked in local law enforcement for years and he had tried to get on so he was going to try again to get on as a game warden and he was telling me about it and I said Kyle that sounds really fun that sounds really interesting would you care if I applied too and he said no come on let's do it so we both went through the application process the hiring process and I kept making it through each step and I said I think I might mess up and, and get this job I think it's <laughs> gonna happen for me yeah. um, so him and I were the first brother sister duo that went through the Game Warren Academy so um, but when he was telling me about the job being outdoors, talking to people, um, you know, and, and how it changes up throughout the seasons, right? You go into each season, it's something a little different. So just as soon as you get bored with one thing, you're on to the next. Mm. Like we've been in duck season, now we're going into, you know, a little break, but now we're going into turkey season and then boating and fishing and all that. So it's just, it's a lot of fun and it's being outside, which, which I enjoy. I don't want to be chained to a desk, you know, so. And working with people, maybe people like me, a little bit right. crazier, you know, but listen, thank you so much for no what you're doing. Thank you yeah. for your service. No we're so thankful for this. And I tell you what, folks, I'm real thankful for something. This is the 100th Ranger Nick. And I gotta say thanks so much to you for watching this. Over the last 10 years, I've been able to do something I love, basically more than anything that is aside from teaching. Well, y'all know what to do. While you're online checking out more things to learn about what game wardens do, hop on over to my Facebook page and say hey there. And until next time, like I always say, for the Farm Monitor, I'm Ranger Nick, reminding you that enthusiasm is contagious. So pass it on. Y'all, thanks so much for watching. We'll look forward to seeing you back here next month for number 101. See ya.